Okay, the first thing we're going to touch on today is going to be color swatches. Um, some of you may not know what this is, so I'm just going to I'm going to pull some of mine open, and then I'll show you how they're used. We're going to flip through some of mine. Um, let's start here. Okay. What color swatches are good for is picking the exact same color and shade every time. So that if you wanted to do two or three layers of the exact same shade, you wouldn't have to remember the hex code. Hex code is a number that defines a color. But, um, and, I'll, and I'll show you where those are located. But this is so that you don't have to have that every time. You can use this image and pull these colors just by, by choosing them with the eyedropper. And uh, this one is for African American skin colors. Um, I've got some other skin tone charts. I, I keep quite a few. Um, this is actually, I think, a color chart for different colors of blonde. Um, there's a different hair color chart. And these are just the names of the colors. And if you see, it says hex code here. So if I went in and put this code, let me do this so I can show you how it works. Let me pull up 664F3C. Let me go up here and we'll, we'll sh I'll show you right quick how this is done. Let me pull up any. So if you go down as soon as you open under touch up and go down to highlights, there is a box here right beside this eyedropper. So if I add that hex code, so we'll pull it, up, pull it back up so I can look at it, 664F. This color is going to be the same exact color as this, as you can see. And that's what those hex codes for. They're designation codes for the exact tone and color. Um, this is just some different, some different tones and colors that I was looking for at that time. This one actually goes through and it tells you that these are um, principal colors used in dazzle paintings during World War I. These are model colors, earth tones, suit tones for both shoes and suits, light tones, floor tones, hair tones. And I'll tell you why I don't really care for this one. I don't know why I've kept it. I think this is just more God for me. If you look at this, this is not all one shade. So if I pick in this area here, I will get one color. If I pick in this area up here, I will get a different color. And let me show you exactly what I mean by that. Let me open that one. So to open a um, swatch, a color swatch, you're going to click on this butter butterfly tool that says overlays. And you're going to go to where it says your own. And then I'm going to go to the folder where I've got mine swatches, swatches, and this is the one here, and what you would do is you're going to resize this, so that it's big enough for you to pick the color from, but it's not over anything you're going to color, and since this is actually hair color, we don't want it to cover any of his hair, and I'm going to actually zoom in some so that you can see he's a little better. And sometimes they come out real pigmented. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it's not. I'm not keeping the distortion. Or I'm distorting it by stretching it a certain way. We'll cancel that out and pull another one. Let me delete this one and we'll do it. try it a different way. 
I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to that because I, I know I'm just looking at the using it for the color itself. And it still looks distorted. Anyhow, we're going to use it anyhow so I can show you what I'm talking about. This may have just not been a very high quality picture. Okay, so after I do that, and I've got it where I want it, I'm going to go down here to the touch up tool and I'm going to go back down here to highlights. And I'm going to touch this eyedropper here. And if I touch this eyedropper, let me take my brush down, size down. So if I touch this eyedropper in this area here, and I paint, it's going to be this color. If I touch it again, I forgot to push apply. Let me back out. Uh, okay, let's do that again. If I touch this and get my eyedropper in this area here, and then paint, it's going to be this color. Let me push apply now, and then we'll do it again, and I'll show you what the other color is. And this will be in the same box. And then if I pick up here. And paint you see it's two different shades it's not the same okay so if I wanted when I get done with this I can just click it and delete so I'm gonna pull in a, another color swatch that I have and show you why color swatches can be a good thing but you want like I said you want the right type of color swatches That's a good one. Open. Okay. So if we wanted to do his suit, this color here. All right. I'm going to go back to touch up. And go to highlights. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to pick this eyedropper here, and I'm going to pick that color. I'm actually going to zoom out so that we can do this. And we can go in and we can just color. But, you know, I can always go in and decide, well, I'm not sure about that color. I can look at the other colors on that exact same swatch. To see if I like one of those better, which this isn't a really good picture for it because it's so um, newspaper. Let's actually get a different photo. It might actually help us some um, for me to show you this. Don't say. We need one that's a little more smooth so you can see the changes a little better. That one will be a good one. It's a photo I've taken. Mm, it may not be because those are awfully big photos. Let's go back to a different one. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and import my own color swatch again. There they are. I'm going to make it bigger. And I'm going to go color. Color. So we're going to pick this color. And then we're going to start coloring. I'm going to take the fade all the way up so we can see this a little better. All 
All right, and I can even go and look at some of these other colors on there to see which one I like best. And you can do this with anything. But say, let me erase a spot. I miss like this and applied it. Getting this color again, even if I use the eyedropper and attempted to get that color, it's still not going to be the exact same shade. Let me show you what I mean. You can still tell. So, if I pick the eyedropper here, and depending on which color I used, I can go back and pick that same color, and it will blend. I think it was this color. But anyhow, that's, that's what that's good for. You can actually go over and make it another, do another pass on it to make it a little darker. But those areas, it's, it's good to be able to pick the same color again. It's not as easy when it's like in the middle there. I should have done an edge side, but um, it's easier to blend that. I could even go in and clone that if I wanted to, to fix that. But um, there's always little ways to do things like that. But it's, it's good to pick the exact colors you want. Especially like um, there are times when you'll have somebody that will say, um, for example, that car was a 1970 whatever. It was candy apple red. You can actually look up the manufacturer and find that candy apple red for that color or for that vehicle make and model at that time and pull that color and use the exact same shade that they used at the manufacturer so that you know you're getting the correct color. Alright, with that being said, um, the other thing I'm going to touch on is going to be backgrounds. So, um, just as a quick demonstration, I'm going to show you how backgrounds are used. Um, we would go down here where it looks like a grid mark. It says textures. And to use your own, you'll go to use your own. There's some here for clouds and other things. But you can use your own. And pull, pull open my texture. And I've got mine here. And as you can tell, I have a lot of different textures. And not every texture is going to work with every photo. So you kind of have to find the texture that you think with the placement and everything that it's going to be a good good fit. Um, solid color backgrounds like this are gradient are great for portraits. Um, but you want to try to stay away from a lot of times shades that you use in the picture because it tends to drown them out. Please. Okay, and it's going to lay it over the entire photo, and I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to go to a reverse effect, and I'm just going to start painting it in. I'm actually going to zoom in so it'll be easier, easier for us to see, and I can move this around wherever I need to. And adjust my brush size. I can actually adjust the brush hardness. If I make it very, very hard, let me show you. See how easy, I mean, how those edges you can see them very very clearly just good like when you're getting up against another edge like that but you can also feather it and to feather it you just bring it back down you can use it somewhere in the middle if you want you will find what works best for you um i just kind of like to feather it in and the reason is is when you get around places like the hair and things like that sometimes it can be kind of tricky so you want to just kind of feather it in and then you can go in and get precise with it and this is this is really art trying to do this the first couple times I did this I have a I have a big problem with ears I always end up turning ears the um, <laughs> color of the background so the main thing is just getting in here make sure you get all of the the edges you know overlap a little bit you don't want there to be like a crisp clean and see like I'm I'm not getting 
real precise here and I'll show you why. I can go in and remove anywhere I've overlapped. Like I can see that I've overlapped there on his hair. And a lot of times if you add effects over this, you'll either be able to see them worse or better. If I change the background, that may have a difference. Like if I decided, uh, I don't really like this background, I'd really like a lighter background or a different type of background, you're going to see um, sometimes those edges and stuff a lot better or places that you've missed. They just stand out. It depends on the background. Some backgrounds, like I said, will work real well. Others will not. That's actually pretty decent. But so, like where I got over on his hair right here, I could go back to where it says original. And I want to feather that because I want it to blend. And I could just take my brush. And that is, that's going to restore the, restore the original color. And blend it really well. So, there's your background replacement. I'm actually going to go back to effect. It looks like I might have missed this spot right there. Not got it real clear. Um, I can adjust the fade. To make it darker or lighter. Or somewhere kind of in between. I can even adjust the saturation. To give it a different hue. Or color. And right here it says multiply. Multiply is going to make it blend with those edges. However, there will be times you will need it to be on normal. And see, when it's on normal, you can see where I've overlapped here. If for some reason, multiply is good for things like trees. When you have to get skies and things like that in between tree branches so that you don't have to go in every little spot. But normal actually gives it a more true color. I can actually take my, go back to the original and take my brush hardness up, and that will actually help me make that sharp edge. Ah. And if I got my brush smaller, it would make it a little easier too. But since this is a quick tutorial, try not to spend a whole lot of time on that because I'm fixing to show you how to find these lovely backgrounds. Alright. So if I decided for some reason I got this one on here and I decided you know what I think I've got another background that would actually look better but I do not want to have to go in and do all this again. I can actually just go back to open my texture. Find a good one. And pick a different texture. And it'll fill that in there. And you can do that. So, I mean, as many times as you like until you find the one that you think looks the best. And if you can't find one, then you need to get online and find you a different one. And that's what we're fixing to cover now. Is um, how to find backgrounds. How to find color swatches. These are tools that, that will benefit you a lot to learn as you're coloring. Yeah, and if I had colored the rest of this, I would go ahead and apply, go over here, use the Orton tool, and it's going to give it a nice, pretty glow there, as you can tell. Alright, so, now that we've co covered what backgrounds are and how to replace them, and we've colored what color swatches are, how they can help you, let's um, cover how to find them. So, if you go over here to Google, 
and say I need, let's look up, um, lip color swatches. These, this is one for natural lip colors. I can right click that and put save image it has. And I go to my swatches and I would save it in here. I don't even bother, I mean you can rename them, but honestly I usually don't. It takes too much time for as many swatches as I pull. Um, and if you, I mean you can keep going down and they've got them for lipstick and lip colors, lip glosses. I like to stick to the solid colors because I know I'm going to get a true color every time. It'll always be the same. Um, another thing, since we talked about hex coats, let's look up hex color swatches. Or we can do color palette. And you can look up, a, it'll give you a whole palette with the hex codes on it. You can't really see that one real well. Let's see, here's the color, the hex color codes. Let's do color swatches. You know, I don't use the hex colors a lot, uh, hex color codes a lot. A lot. Some people do, but just so you know what they are, if you ever hear anybody talk, talking about hex color swatches, that's what it is. Hex a hex is a number that associates with a certain color. So let's look up. Here's you some hair color swatches. Like I said. I don't really care for these because the, the tonage changes through there. I like the solid ones. The ones that give you one specific color. Sometimes it can't be helped and you can use them, but... I mean, you can find all kinds of color swatches just by looking. You may have to adjust how exactly, like I was looking for tree color swatches. Let's do green color swatches. And see, I get all kinds of beautiful greens here that I wouldn't normally have to hunt for or search for if I have these palettes. As a matter of fact, I did one um, that I was having a hard time doing army colors for army uniforms. So, um, that color I believe is called Olive Drab. And that is actually the color there. And I can save that into my color swatches so that I would have it. Here's also some other versions. I think Olive Drab has changed a few a few times over over the years depending on um, what years you were looking at. But a lot of times um, that's you know the these, these are the colors for the military vehicles. You know, it's good to have these things if you need them. These are used, the olive drive used by the army. You know, it's just depending on what you're using it for, you know, these can be some really handy guides to have. You're not, these are ones for the Chrysler Corporation. You know, once you find one, you'll start finding lots lots of them that you'll use. So, I, you know, when I start looking for one, sometimes I find 15 or 20 that I want, and I save them, because you never know 
what what you'll find or what you'll you know what you need it for so like I said it's just all about looking so now that we've touched on um, how to find color swatches they actually have some color swatch generators you can actually put a put picture in and it will pull the colors from it and give you a swatch list but um, that's for another day let's c touch on backgrounds so what I'd look for is actually I'll put in backgrounds because you'll get all kinds of stuff um, I do back uh, backdrops so um, and here they are and I would actually if I was going to use this I would go and I would crop this down and save just this picture that not the edges and all that because that may be an area that I need the background to be but as you see there's hundreds and thousands and thousands of backdrops you can look for backdrops by the color by you know um, what they have in them nature I think I've done some scenery ones photo booth ones um, they even have like I could do I'll get it right in a minute and as you see there's different backdrops that are inspired by by libraries or bookcases you know um you can look up backdrops for everything the best backdrops for me let's look at this one for example that is a high quality picture it takes it a minute to load but it's a higher quality photo and the higher quality photos are going to give you a better look anything that's real pixelated or blurry you want to stray away from because unless you're doing a very 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 small photo it's not going to look correct you want your backgrounds to blend you want them to be a good quality now at times you will need some like you'll be doing an older photo and you won't need one that looks like it's a modern photo so I mean there's all kinds you just you just have to know what you're looking for so and anybody that colors has an idea like this is actually a pretty good one on I'll quit clicking on them you don't actually have to click on them but some of these this would be a good um, fantasy type And you could even do some Christmas backdrops um, with Christmas coming you could definitely do some Christmas ones it would be for something like a you could even do like Christmas card backdrops I think I've been saving these all the wrong one but anyhow I'll go out and sort them out later no So, um, let's look those up. Like, if you took a good family photo, you could throw this backdrop in, or even one like this, and it would just be a beautiful photo. Um, you can tell there's a gray line down here that's loading that tells you that that's probably a pretty high quality photo but any one of these photos would be beautiful for a backdrop for like a Christmas card or something like that and they make like I said they make thousands and thousands they have sites that are dedicated strictly to this I kind of like to to hunt around and do it through 
Google because it's faster and I can look at them all at once and I'm not having to flip through pages. You know, and I can get something pulled from a little bit of probably every page that's out there. I can go to see more results. So, I mean, this is a lot of what um, I wanted to kind of show you and explain to you is, you know, you can make your own photos. You don't have to have a great photo. You can make your own photos. You know, make them look great. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing about it. You can pick what, what you want your backdrop to be for that family photo or, you know, whatever the case may be. And make it suit your needs or the photo you're doing, its needs. You know, it, that's the wonderful thing about it. Um, you're not restricted to any one thing. These are great for children's portraits. As you can tell, you can see a lot of children's portraits. Yeah, so, you, you know, just play with it. Um, see what works for you. With each image, it's going to be something different. Um, let me pull an image. These are actually from my niece's uh, birthday party. But um, we're going to see about pull one. And I actually replaced the background on here. <clears throat> but for example, if I wanted to put a different one. I'm actually looking for the Christmas one I just saved. This may not be the part, the best picture for it, but we're going to, because it's kind of small. And usually it landscapes images work better with landscape images. Portrait, you know, length works best with portrait length, and this one's not. So we'll see what it does. You know, like I said, I'm not being real precise. I'm just wanting to show you that you can kind of make your image your own or whatever image you're working on and give it its own perspective. You know, and if I wanted to actually, I, I could make this normal. I'm almost going to lighten it up probably kind of a darker photo but you can actually see that in the background now um, I could actually take the saturation down a little bit and I can even move it so that I can pull because of the length of it I can pull it and adjust it any way I want I can make it bigger, smaller, you know, so that's what I'm saying. You can, you can really make these photos fit for your needs. So that's my tutorial on backdrops and color swatches. And I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, please let me know and uh, I'll be here to help. Thanks.